So John, hear me out. I think a rain out might actually be the best thing for our angels. And you okay. and I, we're going to talk all about that. Plus Perry Manassian had a media session yesterday and talked about his team and his thoughts on the slumping team. And we're going to share our thoughts on Perry's thoughts. All of that's coming up. You're locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. If you're listening on the audio side, you can rate and review the pod. It helps people find Locked On Angels. And if you're watching on the video side, you can subscribe to be notified every time a new episode drops. Hey, thanks for joining us for this edition of Locked On Angels. you got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Well, Mike, we had a postponed game in New York on Wednesday. It allowed me the opportunity to go watch AEW Dynamite live, and that was pretty cool. So <laughs> I didn't feel I didn't feel guilty <laughs> about going. Yeah, and uh, so that means that there's going to be a double header for the Angels and Yankees today. So we want to ask the question: Is this a good thing, Mike? Why don't you start us out? Okay, a couple thoughts, John. Hear me out, and then you can respond. I think it's a good thing first for the bullpen because the bullpen is tired. They're exhausted. I think maybe as you're getting into May, now we're into June, right? There's probably a couple of nicks and cuts, right? There's some muscles that are achy, and and now they can, you know, get out the the, (laughs) – the massage there's bruises and, <laughs> and there's bruised egos because of yes. the way they've been pitching lately. <laughs> I just think that they can actually have a day where they didn't expect it to heal up, get it, take an ice path, right? Like get into that ice tub and, <laughs> and, and feel real good. So I think that's is really good for our bullpen. I okay. also think speaking of like bodies and, and health, I think it's good for Taylor Ward because he has had a really good day on Sunday. And then when he came back to play, on Tuesday, he looked, he looked terrible and it looked, looked like, like he, he was, was pressing. pressing. Yeah. Yep. And, and so I, I think maybe a part of that is he's feeling the pressure, but another part of that is like, I haven't been in there and I, I need to perform. And so this could be a good day for his body. I also think it's going to be a really good day for the minds of the angels. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I was a huge, huge Chicago bulls fan, you know, this in the nineties and yeah. Phil Jackson was a coach for those bulls teams and also for the Lakers when they won their championships. And he That's was right. so good at helping the team and the and the teammates and even guys like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant who are stars to be able to reset their minds to be able to reset for the next game to forget yeah. about what happened and to continue to move forward and so i think this is really good for the angels mind and then i also think one more thing i think this is actually good for us because there's something about cortez that pitcher i mean i know that he's like the Mr. hot pitcher cortez. right now okay but, yeah but there's something about him that tells me that I think he's going to struggle today. And I think oh, that not being able to pitch on the day that he's supposed to be able to pitch, I think that's going to throw him off. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing that out there. I don't know if there's any credence to it. I don't have any stats to back it up. <laughs> there's just, there's something in my angel heart that says you got a that gut this, feeling. Guy, <laughs> this guy's going to struggle today. Now, when this episode hits and, and maybe, I don't know if he's pitching game one or game two, but um, I might sound like a fool, but I'm hoping that I don't <laughs> sound like a fool. But, you know, Otani's going to go in game one, then Detmers is going to go in game two. So I think we have a real chance today, and I think that that rain delay, that postponement yesterday, was going to be really helpful and is going to be really helpful for our team. What what are your thoughts? Hey, it proved successful the last time we had a rain delay in Mm -hmm. New York. (laughs) That worked out great, didn't it? It worked out great for us, right? Uh, So here's my concerns about a double header. Okay. Normally, under normal circumstances, you would see something like Mike Trout playing Wednesday, and you would see Mike Trout playing Thursday. But when it comes to a doubleheader, there's probably a chance that he might have one of those games off ah, because of the amount of mileage that a doubleheader puts on you. We might see Jared Walsh in both of them. We might see him in one. And I think that's the question coming into the doubleheader today that I'm concerned with. Under normal circumstances, these guys would be playing both games, but because of how much wear and tear there can be now you might have a situation where Mike Trout DHs and then, but then you might see Shohei not hit and we yeah. certainly don't want that. Yeah. Possibly if, if Shohei's starting a game, then maybe that's the opportunity to DH Trout in one game and then have him, 
play in center field the other. So I understand that it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but under the double header circumstances, we often see one star sitting out in at least one of the games. And that's concerning to me because right now we need all the star power that we can get in this we lineup. Do. We need all the bats that we can get in this lineup. I know Matt Duffy was scheduled to lead off yesterday. I'm sorry, not lead off, but he was scheduled to bat cleanup yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And that's something he also did the other day. And I, to me, that's concerning. <laughs> I mm. understand that he's had a consistent bat, but he's not a traditional cleanup guy. And I think that lends itself to what happens in a doubleheader. I know he was scheduled for the regular game on Wednesday, but in a doubleheader, you kind of see some odd lineups and structures and yeah, not the same cohesiveness that you would see in a normal game. So this doubleheader concerns me in that regard of who's in and who's out and what the lineup is going to look like. But at the same time, I think a good point to make is that it's really hard to win both games of a doubleheader. Yeah. I can't remember the last time the angels won both games of a doubleheader. And the reason why I say it's a good thing is because it means that we won't get swept (laughs) and that we certainly don't want that. However, it would be nice to win both games, but it's going to be just as difficult for the Yankees as it will be for the angels. And then when it comes to a doubleheader, we have gotten ourselves into some very interesting and tricky situations in the past where right. you run out of players in one game and somebody's not available in another game and Otani's playing right field and it just things kind of go crazy. Yeah. So it's going to be a wild day and those are my concerns. I'm confident in Otani starting well. I'm confident in Detmers starting well, but at the same time, I'm concerned about what the structure of the lineup is going to look like and if Joe is going to incorporate all of our heavy hitters. So what do you think in regards to that? You know, I think that we have to put the heavy hitters in there because, listen, Mm -hmm. we're going to go to Philadelphia this weekend, and I think that if you're going to give Mike Trout a day off, you give him a day off perhaps on Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think this game is too important. I think the next two games against the Yankees are just too important. You can't get beat up. You have a six game losing streak. You can't put a triple a lineup out there. You need (laughs) everybody in that lineup. And I think I I hear your points, but I do think that Shohei Otani needs to hit and pitch in in that game. I don't think that he needs to be taken out and knowing Shohei, he's not going to go anywhere. He's the only guy that's going to play every single game, right? Because he's just that committed and he's that healthy. And I appreciate that. I think that today, Joe Madden has to throw out his strong lineup. I think that today Joe Madden has to be confident in the players he puts out there. Listen, we can't have Tyler Wade playing the outfield in Yankee stadium. (laughs) We need Tyler Wade to either play in the infield or come off the bench. We need our a team, not our triple a team today. And that means having Brandon Marsh in the lineup. I'm sick of not have him not being in the lineup for this team. So let's go out there. Let's do well in this double header and and hopefully we can take two and, and win this series against the Yankees. Well, coming up on Locked On Angels, have you ever noticed that some players get a ton of fan heat? I used heat because it's a wrestling term. Uh, Get a ton of fan heat when they struggle, and then other players just don't? You ever ever wonder why that happens? Well, John and I know, and we're going to tell you, and that's coming up on Locked On Angels. But first, our show today is brought to you by Rock Auto. With so many different makes and models of cars today, it can be nearly impossible to expect your local auto parts store to stock all the parts your car will need. And so at rockauto.com, you have access to all the parts your car will ever need. From brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, even carpet, rockauto.com has it all. And here's the good news. Rock Auto is a family business. They've been serving the do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And because they're family-owned, they understand budgets, which is why Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer, including you. So if you're working on the car, Go to rockauto.com and see the parts that they have available for your car or even your truck. And when you do, make sure that you write locked on in the how did you hear about us box. So that way they know that we sent you from Locked On Angels. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car or truck will ever need. Rockauto.com. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And we have an important favor to ask of you. We've put together a survey so that we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On Podcasts. 
So if you want to participate, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey to get started. It's not going to take very long, and everyone that completes a survey will qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 ticket master gift cards. That'll get you to a show. That'll get you to a, a game, whatever you want. Uh, to take the survey, all you have to do is go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey, and we really appreciate your help. John, on Wednesday, Perry Manassian held a media session, mm -hmm. and he addressed two hot topics, all right? And here's the two topics hot. he addressed. Joe Adele and the slumping angels, the team's mm -hmm. recent struggles. So Those are the two things about, that I'm concerned about. Right. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned about it too, right? So I want to talk about Joe for a moment, and I want to get your, get your thoughts. So Perry said that Joe is making progress in AAA, but isn't quite ready to return. And so here's, here's some stats just so we can kind of get an idea of where he's at. Joe's hitting mm -hmm. 234 at Salt Lake right now. His OPS is 1,008. Okay. And he's had 79 plate appearances. And Perry said that there's still some work that Joe needs to do offensively and defensively. He did mm. point out that Joe has 23 strikeouts. And, and so that's in, in 79 plate appearances. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And he also pointed out that Joe's defense needs a bit of help as well. So he just needs to be able to read players really well. And so he said he's getting good information and he's really learning a lot while he's there. And the other thing that he pointed out was that Joe has had a great attitude about it. And, and I'm good. not surprised by that, right? Yeah, like you can no. see this guy being a fun, excitable dude who is just really thankful to be there. And so here's my question to you. Yeah. Does this information help you in regards to Joe? And, and what do you think that the angels need to see in Adele in order for him to come back up? Uh, I, I think that's a good question. And what gets me about this is why are we surprised by this? Why is Perry Manassian surprised that, that Joe needs to work on his offense and strike out less and work on his defense? Not, I'm not saying that Perry is surprised, but I think what I'm getting at is you, you kind of promised this guy the fourth outfield spot, if not one of the three outfield spots hmm. to begin the season. And are we surprised that he's still struggling with strikeouts and defense? Isn't this something you should have figured out before the season started? Shouldn't he have started in triple a instead of hmm. been on the team and then sent down to work on this stuff? I mean, these are not new things for Joe Adele. The strikeouts have always been an issue. The defense has always been an issue. I thought he played, fairly well last season in the outfield. And I, I, this is not new information. These are the same things that Joe Adele has been struggling with his whole career. Yeah, And I guess I'm just kind of surprised at the fact that they invited him to be part of this team at the beginning of the season and then said, oh, you know those things you need to work on? You need to work on them some more. We need you to work on those more. Uh -huh. And I guess that is what kind of bothers me about this statement. At the same time, I can understand that, yes, Joe absolutely needs to work on his strikeouts more and his defense more. He needs to strike out less and catch more fly balls in the outfield. Yeah. But this isn't new information. This is the stuff that Joe's always struggled with. And I think what bothers me is that there was an expectation that he was going to be on the big league team with these problems. If that makes hmm. sense. That so makes, oh, yeah, a ton of sense. I wonder if, I wonder if they just didn't anticipate Taylor Ward's, rise yeah, although they definitely have the cushion in the yeah. outfield because of taylor ward yeah but before the season i mean it was hey we're gonna get an outfield of trout marsh and adele this is pretty sweet right and and even with ward joe should be the fourth outfielder he should yeah. be there he yeah. should be platooning with marsh if that's what they want to do seems to me that they're doing that platoon thing with lagaris and marsh i know that joe madden said that <laughs> marsh was banged up you're shaking your head and made me laugh yeah. marsh was banged up and so that's why he was out of the lineup. But I mean, again, we talked about this. If you're going to have Lagarus on this team, then you might as well have Joe Adele. Yeah. Juan Labarfus is not my favorite player. Labarfus. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, he frustrates me because I mean, he's not, he's not the gold glove no. outfielder that he was. And I, I talked about that on Monday's show when I was answering some of the questions, but, and he also, he just doesn't have a great bat. And I did see a, a quote from Madden yesterday. He did say, I, you know, I really liked, how Ligaris <laughs> held up in that first game against the Yanks. And so it was going to be Ligaris in the starting lineup on Wednesday, but then the game got postponed. And I, yeah, I just think like Marsh is your dude. And, and I would rather have Joe Adele platoon with him out there in left field and, yeah. and figure it out. I, I see your point there. And it does, it does kind of feel you're right. It does kind of feel like they were like, 
hey man, why do you still suck? You know, like, <laughs> like, you didn't know this. I mean, I, I don't do this for a living. You don't do this for a living, but we could see it. Angel fans could see it. I don't yeah. know why they didn't see it. This is not a surprise. This is not new news. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mike Perry addressed the slump that the angels are in. So let's talk about that. 10 okay. losses in 13 games. Yet they are still four games over 500. And you and I have talked about how hard it is to fall below 500 and climb back. Yeah. And this Angels team has somehow managed to stay above 500, which is really incredible. In fact, four games over 500. Perry said that he doesn't look at things in six game blocks. And I yeah. thought that was actually, that's a good point. I understand yep. that we're slumping and we have a six game losing streak. But if you zoom out and look at the whole picture, here's what Perry said. We're two months in and our goal was to be in the mix. And right now we are in the mix. Yes, okay. we are definitely in the playoff mix at this point in time. And that is closer to the playoff mix than we've ever been in the last few years. Yeah. And he said the last, last six games are a small sample size compared to the last two months. Perry said, we like this group, those players. And over the time, we will win a lot of games. And some of that, I think, is a really good point. But let me ask you this. Is this what a general manager should be saying? And how do you think he really feels? I feel like there's a script for general managers, right? And mm -hmm. so they, they can't really get too hyped and they can't really get too low. And so this feels very Switzerland to me. It feels very neutral, right? Sure. Like, yeah. And, and, and I get what he's saying. I, I do think that it's helpful for fans like us because it has been frustrating and, yeah. and he's right. Like we've been looking at these last six games and we're like, Oh man, it's over. Right. Like, <laughs> well, maybe not us, we're but done. there have been some, right. Like, <laughs> and we've been frustrated and, you know, and I, I did like, there was a tweet yesterday that said, uh, you know, just wait for those Noah Syndergaard DFA tweets that get out there. Right? Yes. Like, <laughs> that happens. It happens in angel fandom and we should knock it off. And I'm guilty of it as much as anybody else. But I, I do like what he has to say in that he's like, we're, we're two months in, mm -hmm. we wanted to be in the mix. We're, we're pleasantly surprised. Right. And we feel like this is a good team. And once we get healthy and once we get there, it, yeah, the bullpen is good, but they've been struggling. I, I did see a, a quote from Archie Bradley. He had an interview as well. And he said, this is a different team when they're struggling. Mm. They're not a team like other teams I've been on. Like they're not, freaking out they're not getting upset they're going mm. okay let's go out and play again today and i wonder if that kind of tone is set by perry i think what he is really thinking i think if we could like peel back his heart and his brain i, I think honestly he's really thinking about who his manager is going to be next year because mm. I, I i just don't think that joe is going to be the guy. Now, I, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope that the Angels take off and find themselves with 95 to 97 wins, and it's like a, a great season, and we get yeah. far in the playoffs and stuff yeah. like that. But there's something in me that tells me, and I think Angel fans would agree, that that Joe's not Perry's guy, and yeah. and he, he's he got to be neutral in this so that guy. people don't read it, right? He is yeah. Arnie's guy, right? And so I, I think that that's probably what he's really thinking. Yeah. And obviously he's not going to come out and say that publicly. If, if I'm Perry Manassian and I provided Joe Madden with this team and then lost six in a row, I personally would be upset. Yeah. I think that going back to some of these losses, some of it's on Joe total yeah. mismanagement. And yep. I understand at the end of the day, it's the players who go have to go out there and do their job, but you, also have to be mindful that the manager puts those players in the situations that they're in. And sometimes you pick the wrong guy for the wrong situation. And sometimes yeah. you pick the right guy for the right situation. And I think Joe has made a lot of mistakes over these last few games. I understand one way or another, the starting pitcher isn't good. The offense isn't good. The bullpen isn't good. I understand that happens, but I think that there are key moments you can look at in some of these games, like running Aaron loop out again, Aaron loop has struggled the last few weeks. And he struggled the night before he gave up the lead in that Saturday game. And it was like, Joe wanted to put Aaron loop in a situation where he could prove himself, but maybe that wasn't the moment to go and prove himself. Sure. <laughs> it's like, you just sure. watched him struggle on Friday. Why are you running him out there again? Yeah. Can't you go to somebody else? So there's just been little moments like that. And I think if I was Perry Manassian and saw the success that this team was having early on, I'd feel pretty good about that. But at the same time, to see this six in a row lot losing streak would be pretty frustrating as a general manager to me. Yeah. Today's show is brought to you by blue Nile.com blue Nile is your number one source for jewelry online. 
Since 1999, John, they've helped millions and millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring. Blue Nile is committed to ensuring the highest ethical standards are observed when sourcing diamonds and jewelry. And if it's not perfect, no problem. 100% satisfaction guarantee. And if you need your special purchase fast, in most cases, Blue Nile can deliver overnight. Every order is insured and it arrives in a discreet package that won't give away what's inside. So make your special moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Angels listeners. They get $50 off purchases of $500 or, mo- or more. Just use the code Locked On at checkout. That's Locked On at checkout. Go to BlueNile.com today. We're saving you mo money, mo money, mo money. <laughs> <laughs> you had to point it out, didn't you? <laughs> hey, so we wanted to have a conversation about the fact that when players struggle, sometimes we are very kind to them, and sometimes we want to shoot them into the moon. So what what <laughs> yes. does uh, what does that mean as a fan and as a player? Why is it that we have such grace for some players and don't have that same amount of grace for them. The other so players I, we call Juan Labarfus. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, the Steve Cshex of the world, if you will. Uh, let's talk about it. And and you and I ha- came up with a couple of reasons. So let's yes. just kind of bounce back and forth here. I think first, if we notice that a player is struggling, or I should say, if is playing good defense, it helps the fan not get so frustrated with them when they yeah. are struggling. Yeah, Jared Walsh is a great example. I know Jared Walsh has been sitting around 250-ish in his batting average, but man, we wouldn't make half the outs that we have needed to make without him stretching over there. Again, yoga pants Jared over there yeah, uh, stretching out and getting those outs. And same goes with Andrew Velasquez. I think we are more patient with him and his bat, which is actually coming around some, and he's showing a little bit of pop, and he's showing that he can get on base. Uh, but for a long time there, he was batting under 200. Yeah. But we liked him because of his defense, and we didn't fault him for his bat because he plays such great defense. So when players are struggling yet performing very well on defense, I think that we have a little bit more grace for them. Give us another reason, Mike. I think that Jared Wall should play Mr. Fantastic in the MCU because he can like stretch and. <laughs> 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 All right. I love when a player hustles. And yes. when they're struggling, I love when you can see them hustle, man. I, it drives me nuts when a player just jogs down to first base because yes. I'm a believer that they can beat it out every single time yeah. right? or cause some panic in the defenders. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that hustling player who's struggling is my favorite player of all time. And I will mm-hmm. never get mad at them. And so Brandon Marsh is an example of that. That guy is always running. He's always hustling. Even when he made that really terrible error where the ball went under his, his <laughs> glove and he had yeah. to run after it, that guy hustled. Right. And then he just threw a rocket and it was, it was awful. And he, you could tell he was upset, yeah. but the fact that he hustled and then you saw him just continue to play great defense, I love a hustling player. Otani's that way. And, and oh, 100%. Because he's a star, he's a unicorn, he's like the greatest player of of, of today, right? Like yeah. I, the fact that he hustles just wins my heart over and, and wins the heart of fans over Absolutely. because he doesn't have to do that, right? Like he could just jog if he wanted to and he cuz he's pitching and hitting, but yeah. he doesn't do that. <laughs> so when a player's struggling and they're hustling, I have a tendency to not get upset with them. And so that's a that's a note for those players out there. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Can I tell you, before I get into the third reason, this, yeah. this has to do with the third reason. There was a moment when the Angels were playing the Rangers and Jared Weaver, there's your reference, <laughs> uh, was on the mound in Texas at Globe Life Park, the old Slugfest Stadium, right? Yeah. Balls would fly out of that stadium. And Weaver just had a terrible game. And when he walked off the mound, Texas, the, the stadium was playing uh, hit the road, Jack, don't you come back? No, more. you know, mm-hmm. and Weaver was singing along to it. <laughs> and I think it was Alex Curry asked him afterward. Hey, we, we, we saw you singing along to the song that they played for you when you walked off. What, what What's that about? And he was like, because I sucked. Like I needed to hit the road. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so our third reason when a player is kind to the media and acknowledges that they're struggling Rendon has done this when when we have been upset with him for stinking it up. Rendon has acknowledged, yeah, I sucked. Yeah, like that was awful, yes. and I I yeah. need to get better. I love when players acknowledge when they're struggling because 
it shows that they're humble people. They know yes. that they have faults. They know that they are going through a slump and they know that it sucks and they know that it sucks for the fans too. They, we don't want to see them struggle and, and they, they have sympathy for us as we have sympathy for them. But I thought that Weaver example was a great example of a time that's good. player just acknowledged that they were not doing that well. And that ende- endears us to the player even more. How about a fourth reason? I think the contract of a player actually matters mm, if we're going to get upset mm-hmm, with them or not. Mm-hmm. Right. Like we were so frustrated when Albert, when he signed with us in 2012 <laughs> and he started really terribly, we Didn't were like, a home run to like on. May. <laughs> yeah. And then I remember I was a part of the, the conversation. I usually wouldn't like comment online. It was the first time that I commented online and I was like, Vlad Guerrero didn't do this. <laughs> you know, like, Cause I was just frustrated. It was like, come on, yeah. buddy, put it together. Right. Yeah. And, and it, I think it really depends on the contract of the player. And so you mentioned like, Walsh or Velasquez, yeah, they play great defense, but they also don't have this huge albatross of a contract right. that makes us go, we're paying you to, to suck, right? And I think that's why <laughs> fans have been really, really frustrated with Rendon, and some people have connected it to like, oh, it feels like an Albert contract or a, mm. a Josh Hamilton contract or whatever. But I think the, the big money contracts, they breed big expectations, and when yeah. those expectations are not met, Fans totally. are like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> like, I think, I mean, Freddie Freeman's a great example of, of somebody who's meet, living up to the contract that they're getting. Yes. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we would like to see more of that from Rendon, but the guy's been hurt. And it's the same thing with Syndergaard. Like the guy hasn't pitched in two years. Rendon's been hurt and the Syndergaard's been hurt. These guys need some time to get back to who they are and get back to what they do well. I yeah. think like when they're frustrated with somebody like, Adele in the same way that we get frustrated with big contracts. We get frustrated when people don't live up to big expectations. How long have we heard that Joe Adele is our, our number one guy. And then we're, we're bummed out and frustrated when he's not being the guy that we were told he could be. Right. I think that has a lot to do with it as well. So this is a good conversation. Next time you're about to criticize somebody. Think about for a minute why you're being gracious with one person and then criticizing this other player. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And now make your second listen, the Locked On MLB podcast with our buddy Sully. He brings his unique perspective of the major leagues past and present, and it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, if anything that we talked about on the pod today stuck out to you, be sure to tweet at us at Locked On Angels on Twitter. You can also reach us at Super Halo Bros on both Twitter and Instagram. And Tomorrow, we should be talking about the doubleheader today, but what else do we have on deck, Mike? Well, they're playing the Phillies this weekend, and you and I are going to give our keys to a successful weekend in Philadelphia, but we're going to give it through song. As so you don't always. Miss that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, until then, everyone, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. And thanks for making us part of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Angels.